So the first thing I want to tackle today is the Peruvian ceviche. Um, when I was in Peru last year, I pretty much visited Lima, Cusco, Sacred Valley, Machu Picchu, Puno, Lake Titicaca, and a number of areas in between. And at each stop, I had to order their ceviche because it's one of my all-time favorite dishes and that's what Peru is known for. So I went online and because I'm a beginner, I wanted something really simple. So um, to get this recipe, you go on food.com and search for simple Peruvian ceviche. I wanted to show you what ingredients you'll need for this dish. Really easy, uh, red onion, a few cloves of garlic. You're going to need the pulp or the juice from a number of different limes. So I have um, several here. And then you will need a habanero pepper. This is a really, really hot pepper, so you need to be very careful in terms of how you slice it and how you handle it. So I'm not really touching the pepper right now. Oh, oh don't rub your eyes either. And um, you're going to need some cilantro. Um, the main component is a white fish. The recipe called for tilapia. Um, but you can choose other white fishes like um, cod, sea bass, um, flounder. So the first thing you want to do is prepare your fish. Uh, the recipe um, called for two pounds of white fish or tilapia. Um, and I essentially just got half, um, uh, one pound. So I went ahead and put it on a chopping board. You're going to want to chop these up into small cubes, ceviche style. So I went ahead and chopped up the tilapia into small chunks and I'm going to put it aside in that small container. So now that I've chopped up the tilapia, I'm going to go ahead and chop up the vegetables that go with it. They ask for about 8 to 10 garlic cloves and since I'm halving the recipe, it's going to be 4 to 5. So I went ahead and pre-peeled some of these garlics and you need to chop it up. You want to get it as fine as possible, but I'm going to go ahead and cheat here. I'm going to use my mezzaluna and then I'm going to start chopping up these onions. And it's so much faster than a regular knife. Oh, one just fell down, but it's great. It's a great kitchen tool. You could get this on Amazon.com. The ones that are made from Italy are the best and this has the wooden handle. Okay, the garlic is all chopped. I um, think I did too much, <laughs> but that's okay. I love, love, love garlic, and I could always um, use it for something else. But. Okay, so the next thing we're going to tackle is the red onion. The recipe calls for a full onion, but I only need half. So I'm going to go ahead and chop off the ends. Put that aside. And then you're going to take out the skin. Just going to do a little incision here to take out the outer layer. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm going to probably start crying on this video. But I've been putting red onions on pretty much everything lately. Oh, and now it's on the floor. Oh, well, I'll, I'll clean up later. Oh, my eyes are starting to tear up already. That's okay. So I just want half of this. Oh, boy. You need and to have your onion at an angle. And you take a really sharp knife and you start to slice really thin pieces. But you basically want it to be as thin as possible. And so I'm already crying. Oh. All right. I'm going to do this as, as quickly as I can. Okay, so I just prepped my onions. I'm going to put that aside and go ahead and chop up some cilantro. It's going to smell that. It's one of my favorite smells. Some people can't stand it, but I love it, especially in guacamole. Um, I only need a teaspoon, which is half uh, what they recommend, so I'm just going to chop off a little bit of that. Wow, I feel like an expert instead of a beginner. This is pretty cool. 
Here's my measuring spoon, one teaspoon. Gonna pack that in. So next up, um, recipe calls for eight to 12 limes that are squeezed, but because I'm only using half, I am gonna put aside Let's do five sets, five limes. Here we go. First one. See how easy this is? And there's not much pulp in here. I'm not sure if you can see that. You want enough lime juice to coat all of that fish. So I'm pretty much done squeezing all the limes. There's a little bit bit of pulp in there so I'm oh shoot I spilled it on the counter <laughs> so I'm gonna um, go ahead and strain this a little bit more and then tackle the one thing that I was scared to tackle and that's the habanero all right next up is chopping and seeding the habanero so this little thing can kill you. It'll kill your palate because it's so hot. Um, I looked this up and there was like a grid of six um, different peppers. Um, and basically it was like five out of the six in terms of the heat value of it. So a um, little scared. I don't want to really touch it with my bare hands. So I went on YouTube last night. There was a nifty trick in terms of how to handle it and it's using a fork and a knife. I'm going to go ahead and take off the top, chop off the bottom, and then I'm using this to actually go around the seeds into sections. It's a lot easier to chop that way. If you want to have a true uh, Peruvian pepper, I believe the pepper is called ahi um, amarillo. Um, I, I don't know where to find that around here. Now that you've chopped everything up, um, go ahead and pick your cubed fish and start piling everything on top of it, except for the red onions. That goes on last. So here's the cilantro and the chopped garlic. Go ahead and sprinkle that on. And then I am going to carefully push the habanero here. I don't want to touch it. I made a mess in this kitchen. I'm going to have to clean it up later. Put this away. So, so far, fish, habanero, cilantro, garlic. Um, and then we're going to want to add some seasoning here. So the recipe calls for half teaspoon of black pepper, only using half that recipe. So I have my one fourth teaspoon and I'm gonna sprinkle the pepper on. Okay, next up we need a teaspoon of salt. I'm only using half, so I need a half teaspoon. I'm using some sea salt here from Italy. Okay, the next step would be to take your lime juice that was freshly squeezed and you want to make sure there's enough to cover the fish. Okay, so I have that and um, you're going to go ahead and mix all the ingredients together. Remember, uh, do this step before adding the red onion. Okay, the last step before putting this in the refrigerator is sprinkling the red onion. Remember, you wanted this, these strips to be as thin as possible. I think I could have done a better job, but as a first timer, this isn't bad. Okay, that's a lot of red onion in here. Just gonna do a really quick stir. Um, actually, I'm not sure if you're supposed to stir that in, but 
we'll find out. So I am gonna go ahead and cover this, put it in the fridge um, anywhere between two to three hours. Okay, it's been about two to three hours um, since I put my ceviche mix in the refrigerator. Um, I think that's how long it should take to cure. Other recipes um, have shorter time. Okay, it smells great, by the way. And I'm taking one of my martini glasses because I think from a presentation standpoint, it's going to look pretty nice. And then I'm going to just scoop up just a few teaspoons of this awesome mix. Doesn't that look good? And I think I'm going to use one of my cool little spoons here. So, okay, this is my first time making this. Um, I'm going to try it and hopefully it's tasty. Okay, that is a great recipe and I'm so <laughs> proud of myself because I, I don't really cook that much except in the past year. But this is pretty good so I'm um, probably gonna make it for some friends and family pretty easy love it